Enter. Bonnie Thrabold, the staff as requested, 8.30 precisely. Excellent, excellent. Tell them all to come in. I can't tell them to come in. I mean, I'm subservient. If I tell them to come in, I shall fracture protocol. I am a blue-collar worker and they is white-collar workers. Now, a blue-collar worker can ask a white-collar worker, but on the other hand, a white-collar worker can tell a blue-collar worker. But if they do, they have to do it very, very nicely, otherwise you get a punch of five. What happened to Ruta? I like that. <laughs> now, the, however you do it, Mr Harmon, please arrange for them to come in here. With the greatest of pleasure. Right, you mob, in here. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Nice Rumble. I hope you don't mind if we bring in our coffee and biscuits, sir. Oh, well, I suppose it's all right. When I was a junior and Mr. Prentice sat in this chair, I certainly would never have dreamt of it. Yes, we all had a great respect for Mr. Prentice. <laughs> well, in any case, don't drop the crumbs all over the floor. I'm fine. If you dunk them, they don't fuff about. Fuff about me? It's what crumbs do, and you've just done it. <laughs> Don't bother with that now, Mr Humphreys. Now, today is a red-letter day in the Grace Brothers' calendar. <laughs> but today is young Mr Grace's birthday, and you know the tradition. On his way up to the boardroom, young Mr Grace stops on every floor. As the lift gates open, every department carols forth its birthday greetings by singing happy birthday to you. <laughs> this makes young Mr Grace very happy. Any questions? Uh, yes, Mr Humphreys. Mr Rumbold, while I was on my knees under your desk, I couldn't help noticing something that indicated to me that you must have got dressed in a terrible hurry. <laughs> really? What was that? Only a keen eye would notice it. Well, what was it? Now, don't keep us in suspense. I wish I hadn't mentioned it now. Well, what is it? You've got odd socks on. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Prentice would never have worn odd socks. Well, nobody's going to notice my odd socks. Excuse me, sir. Uh, does uh, young Mr Grace intend to uh, continue the other well-honoured uh, tradition? Oh, yes, yes. We shall all be getting our birthday bonus. Mm. So what it boils down to is that we've been called in at 8.30 to get a two-bob bit and hear the amazing news that you've got odd socks on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not unaware of the sarcastic note in your voice, Captain Peacock, but uh, while we're on the subject of dress, where are your birthday pom-pom dahlias? Well, they haven't arrived yet, sir. But I made the arrangements personally. Mm, that's probably why they haven't arrived. <laughs> Don't worry, sir. I sent Mr Lucas to the florist and told him to put them on the account. You exceeded your authority there, Peacock, but in the circumstances I shall overlook it. Good heavens, he's due here at any minute. We'd better take our positions. No. I've got the flowers, Captain Peacock. No. Oh, quick, gentlemen, put them in your buttonholes. Ladies, uh, make your own arrangements. <laughs> Mr Lucas, are you out of your mind? These are supposed to be pom-poms and these are decoratives. <laughs> well, it was either that or lilies. And I thought, in view of Mr Grace's age, lilies might not be very tactful. Uh, if I may make the suggestion, look, here you are. Short back and sides. That should do the trick. No, 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 Mr Harmon, that makes you look even worse. At least mine won't fall out. I've jammed the end of my knicker elastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I certainly don't intend to accommodate mine in that fashion. Oh, well. <laughs> Flowers are very sensitive, you know. It might wilt if it found the end stuck in your navel. <laughs> <laughs> so, if I might suggest a solution, would it be preferable, from Mr Grace's point of view, if when he arrives we stand in front of the lifts holding them proudly in our hands? That should give him something to remember. <laughs> push, push, push. They won't fall down in class, but you can hear the chant. Yes, now, remember, today it's the customary free luncheon, so we must all be in the canteen no later than two minutes past one, when young Mr Grace will, of course, be serving us all personally. Well, I hope it's quicker than it was last year. By the time I got it, my hot pot was cold pot. <laughs> I hope the party doesn't go on as long as it did last year. I mean, I missed me last bus. I seem to remember I gave you a lift home. Yes, that's why I don't want to miss me last bus. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only man I know that can drive, steer, change gear, and he's still got two hands left over. <laughs> Well, I can't stay too late. The man next door is popping in every half hour to keep an eye on my pussy. <laughs> and after half past eleven, his wife won't let him out. Well, the party starts at eight, as usual, which gives us time to have the last dress rehearsal of our birthday show at 5.30. Quick, he's coming up. Right, Grace, everybody. Grace. Mm, there 
the note we start on to sing happy birthday to you. Have you got it? Yes, yes we, we have. have. And the suspense is killing us. <laughs> it's stuck. Never mind, carry on. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. Grace. Happy birthday to you. I'm stuck. <laughs> you all right, sir? Well, it's not very often an 81-year-old man stuck stuck in the lift with a 19-year-old secretary. Of course I'm all right. Shut the doors. <laughs> oh, Mr. Rumbold. Yes, sir? Uh, my secretary has just seen something she'd never expected to see. Oh, really, sir? <laughs> yes, uh, you got odd socks on. <laughs> written them nicely. Oh, thank you. I came top at school in joined-up handwriting. <laughs> what was you best at? I got an O-level in collecting dinner money. <laughs> Mrs Slocum, Captain Peacock. We'll put Mr Tebbs up at this end. Here, I don't want to sit next to Mr Lucas. Why not? He pinches my bottom. I'll sit next to Mr Lucas. <laughs> oh, doesn't the canteen look spotless? Yeah. The flies are all confused. They're flying around. They don't know where they are. <laughs> don't waste any money, do they? Those are last year's flowers. They're not, you know. They're the year before us. How do you know that? Well, that's the one you used to stir your tea with when you couldn't find your pencil. <laughs> Those lift girls are switching tables with us again. This is the one with the wonky leg. Uh, who's got something about uh, Subi? I'm sorry, I can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> Try a couple of cheese biscuits. Guaranteed indestructible. Not to mention the cheese. Ooh. You can tell it's Mr Grace's birthday. Look how nicely they've decorated the edge. What do you mean, decorated the edge? Those are mice teeth marks. <laughs> That's in a canteen trap. Oh, it's disgusting. You know, we ought to complain. We can't. It's free. Mm. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll all write our initials on it, and if we get it next year, we'll complain then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, this has already got some initials on the back here. Look. There's a heart with an arrow through it saying, Mrs. Slocum loves Captain Peacock. <laughs> that was back in 1964. <laughs> Christmas party cheese, yes. Oh, how sad the passing of the years. Then young, fresh and tasty, now old, tough, leathery and rejected. <laughs> the cheese hasn't aged too well either. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, be upstanding for young Mr. Grace, whose birthday what it is today, which is why he was having the free nos. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Good afternoon Mr. Grace. Grace. <laughs> Mr. Grace will now hand out the traditional birthday bonus. In the year 1893, Mr. Grace Senior first presented a silver florin to each grateful member of his staff, and the custom has continued to this very day. Pass them down. <laughs> Of course, in those days, a florin <laughs> was a florin. In these days of inflation, it would probably be worth about ten pounds. But young Mr. Grace doesn't want to break with tradition. <coughs> oh. Hello, ten gentlemen! Mr. Grace, for now, say grace. <laughs> for what you are about to receive, may you be truly grateful. Surely, sir, you mean for what we are about to receive, may we be truly grateful? No, no, for what you are about to receive. We're lunching at the Savoy, aren't we, dear? <laughs> that was one of your suggestions, Mr Grace. Yes, well, we don't say grace before the other suggestions, do we? Uh, <laughs> I'm in good form today. Uh, yes. My lord, St. Gemma, the Grace Brothers gruel. This is a, a very moving occasion. It was after the last lot of Grace Brothers gruel. <laughs> My Lord, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Grace will now, as usual, serve the first help into the most junior member of the staff. May I say how truly humbly grateful I am, Mr. Grace. <laughs> <laughs> May I congratulate you, sir, on getting some of it in the place. <laughs> My Lord, ladies and gentlemen, the Mr. 
Your Grace will now serve the traditional champagne. Thank you. Astros Pimantus, 1962, bottled by British Railway and bought up as a job lot when they went over to diesel. <laughs> Thomas Hurd preferred a diesel. <laughs> May it all do it to the barn. Mr Grace will now remove the cork. <laughs> well, this is the eighth time running I've not been able to open this bottle. Never mind. Put it back in the cellar, I'll try again next year. Yes. <laughs> See you all at the party. Yes, well, I'm sure we can't have more fun than we've already had, sir. Yeah. <laughs> well, goodbye. You've all done very well. Thank you, Mr. Grace. Mr. Grace. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, sir. Oh, was it the noise? No, no, the waste. The you, expense. You want a doctor, sir? <laughs> no, uh, uh, give me a glass no. before it's all gone. <laughs> Enter. Oh, customers all gone, Mr. Harmon? Oh, yes, sir. Mr. Humphrey said he'd be ready to start rehearsals in a couple of minutes. Oh, by the way, I've got your Humpty Dumpty outfit. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are the other departments doing? Well, I'll suss that what they're doing on the other floors. <laughs> Aberdashery's doing buttons and bows. The account department are doing Indian love lyrics, and bathroom fittings, they're doing excerpts from Gone with the Wind. <laughs> and as a PR to resistance, young Mr Grace has booked a professional cabaret to entertain us after we've done our little bit. Right, now, if you'd like to put this over oh, your head, yes. sir, uh, I'll get you all ready right. for the yeah. occasion. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's lovely. That's nice, like that, isn't it? Yeah. Where's Mr Rumbold? Rumbold, he's here. Ah. Oh, well, well. Well, I'm well, good luck with the cabaret tonight. Coming up. I hope Mr Humphreys is right about this idea. You know, doing a sort of ballet thing with so little time to rehearse seems to me rather adventurous. Now, he's in his element playing the big producer, I can tell you. Oh, he loves it. <laughs> Everybody on stage for the dance of the toys. <laughs> teddy bear first, teddy bear toy. <laughs> Mr. Tebbs, are you in there? Of course I'm in here. Well, you've got your head on sideways. <laughs> well, I, I'm looking through the ear. <laughs> You're supposed to look through the mouth. I know, but when I look through the mouth, I can't hear through the ear. <laughs> well, we'll find some way of getting in touch with you. Come here. Then, Now, over here. That's right. Now, little boy blue, Mr Lucas, it's half past six. I must check all these costumes. <laughs> Mr Lucas. <laughs> Mr Lucas, why has little boy blue got a plastic mac on? Because little boy blue's tights are too tight. <laughs> and his smock is too short. In fact, little boy blue is seriously contemplating on handing in his horn. <laughs> I should be the judge of that. Let me have a look. <laughs> You've done that before, haven't you? <laughs> now, where's little girl Alice, age four? Mrs. Slocum, what are you doing dressed as little girl Alice, age four? You're supposed to be Miss Muffet. Well, I couldn't get into the Miss Muffet costume. <laughs> what makes you think you got into little Alice, age four? <laughs> well, it's only supposed to be make-believe. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to stretch our imaginations. <laughs> now, where's Miss Muffet? <laughs> Miss Muffet. <laughs> is driving me bonkers. <laughs> What's that for? To sit on. Miss Brahms, Miss Muffet sits on a tuffet. It's about that big. I'm not sitting on anything that big in this skirt. Yeah, they've got a 12-inch puff in soft furnishings. <laughs> mm, I thought he'd have been in the novelty department. <laughs> I need a second opinion on Little Boy Blue's tights. Come on, show Miss Brahms. I 
didn't see anything out of place. <laughs> In these tights, there's no room for anything to be out of place. Right, right, now take that Mac off. Now, where's the tin soldier, Captain Peacock? <laughs> oh. oh, that is nice. May I ask why Mr. Lucas is wearing a plastic Mac? <laughs> Point taken. <laughs> Mr. Harmon. Well, one horse coming up. Compliment from the display department. Oh, isn't that sweet? <laughs> Would you care to get mounted, Captain Peacock? <laughs> you don't look at all comfortable. I'm not. Can you walk? Mm hmm. <laughs> well, can you trot? Not without irreversible consequences. <laughs> Mr. Harmon, this is not good enough. Well, display went to a lot of trouble with that animal. Pull the reins. <laughs> well, well, if you don't fancy that, there's only one other thing. Warwick, bring up the alternative transport. Come on, Warwick. Tin soldier riding around on a sheepdog, we lose all sense of reality. Look, there's only one other alternative in the toy department. There's a stick with a horse's head handle. Warwick, ask Stafford to bring it up, will you? Cedric will tell him where it is. In the meantime, practice with that. Captain <laughs> Peacock. Uh, you'll all look absolutely splendid. Mr. Lucas, I suppose there is a very good reason why Little Boy Blue is wearing a plastic Mac. There is. Hi, right, Mr. Rumble, to the piano. Oh, right. Now we'll go from where little girl Alice, age four, wakes up into the cot, Mrs. Slocum. <laughs> oh, push yourself in! <laughs> That's how they trap you for bottom, Mrs. You know. I'll smack your legs in a minute. <laughs> now, let me, let me remind you of the plot. See, you're a four-year-old little girl, and you're fast asleep, and along comes the fairy prince, played by me. <laughs> what have I got to lose? As I was saying, the fairy prince comes along and he scatters fairy dust over oh, you. Mr. Harm, the fairy dust. Oh, yeah. Here, are, W H. <laughs> oh, that's magic, Mr. Harmon. <laughs> Don't breathe it in, otherwise you get silicosis. <laughs> now then, as I was saying, now you're all toys scattered around the nursery casually. You see. Yes, come along, be casual about the nursery. <laughs> Not as casual as that, Mr. Lucas. <laughs> Captain Peacock, you've got to lull more. Yes, sit like this. <laughs> Lovely. And Teddy sit with their arms stretched straight out. <laughs> I said, Teddy sit with their arms stretched straight out. <laughs> good, Mr. Teddy. Very good. Very good indeed. Mr. Humphreys, yes. could I have a moment? What is it, Mr. Rumbo? Well, it's when I sit down, my egg rises up. <laughs> My face almost disappears. Well, we all know it's you. Yes, but I can't see the piano. Hang on a minute. <laughs> you are hard-boiled, aren't you? <laughs> there. Now then, we'll take it from the Fairy Prince's Coming On music. I'm not in my coming on position yet. <laughs> right, music! <laughs> hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. What is it, now? We're all toys in the nursery, right? Right. And we don't wake up until you sprinkle the fairy dust over little Alice, age four here, who then wakes up, winds us all up, right? Correct, Mr Lucas. How come the egg is already awake to play the entrance music for the fairy queen? <laughs> fairy prince. 
Because the egg is not a toy. I don't want to be difficult. But you keep eggs in the kitchen, not in the nursery. He's quite right. Yes. Yeah. Well, the noise from the refrigerator kept him awake, so he came into the nursery to play the piano. <laughs> How did the egg get down off the fridge without breaking? <laughs> because the housemaid dropped a tea towel on the floor, and being hard-boiled, it bounced. Does that satisfy you? I hope it does, because the blood's rushing to my head. Can we proceed? Right! Music! Are you short-sighted or something? Why? Well, you've been past my cot twice and I'm still waiting for the fairy dust. I've got to work up to it. Music! <laughs> Serves you right for going to sleep with your mouth open. <laughs> now, we'll take it from the waking up music. It's only the fairy prince. Yes, and in a minute he's going to turn to a frog to keep himself out of mischief. <laughs> now, you wind up all the toys. Soldier toy first. Hang on, hang on. Where's his key? You have to pretend that he's got a key. Oh. <laughs> Circum, he's not a 27 bus. <laughs> That's right. Lovely. Now show surprise and music. strong spring, has he? Does he have to run down here? He runs down wherever his spring runs down. <laughs> right, Mrs Slocum. Now all the rest of the toys. Teddy next. Come along. <laughs> Lovely. Wind him up and Teddy springs to life. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's asleep. I can hear him snoring through the ear hole. <laughs> Give him a shot of your magic dust. Mr. Tibbs, are you free? <laughs> now then, little boy blue. Look at do I have to wind everybody up? It's gonna take forever. Well, that's because you know what's going to happen, but to the audience, it's magic. <laughs> Come on. Wind him up. Show surprise. Oh, good. <laughs> Mr. Lucas. <laughs> your clockwork, not drunk. <laughs> Music! I'm not playing. <laughs> Go over to Miss Muffet and wind her up. That's right. Wind away. Show surprise. Oh. Now, little Miss Muffet dances with little boy Blue. Music. <laughs>
for the last chorus. The professional cabarets arrived, they're on their way up. Oh, isn't it exciting? You won't think so when you see what they're doing. Oh. <laughs> they're all the same as us. Not exactly the same, Mush. <laughs> well, what are we going to do? We can't all do the ballet of the toys. We'll have to do what we did last year. Well, we've only got a couple of minutes. We're the first turn. Mr Lucas, you're forgetting the fairy dust. In my top hat to my white tie and my tails Silver yeah. army excellent Stepping out with my baby Can't be back cause he's in right Ask him when will the day be The big day may be tonight You can see me every day staring in your way. I look for something except for me as I think it's a bit of bread. And love of bread is pretty good. Dripping, 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 dripping. 